thank you. I'm, I'm going to give you a brief discussion today about yesterday and today, and a much longer discussion about tomorrow, and the challenges facing all of us in dealing with water supply. Um, I'm going to start with a question, however. Uh, as you looked at this region over the last 30 years, how many people think that we're using about the same water, same amount of water we did 30 years ago? How many think we're using more water than we did 30 years ago? How many think we're using less water than we did 30 years ago? One person? We're using way less water than we did 30 years ago. 30 years ago, we, uh, a peak day of water use in this region, in King County, was about 340 million gallons in a day. Uh, the peak use this summer, during drought conditions, was 211 million gallons of water. Radical change over the last 30 years, radical change. Some due to conservation, some due to efficiency and uh, fixing infrastructure, uh, but it has changed the nature of water use. This is not atypical uh, across the country. Most all utilities in the country are seeing the same kinds of changes with the culture changing, people's use habits changing, plumbing changing. Uh, it has created a phenomenal difference in the use of water in this country and in this region. It also has create, created a lot of challenges. Um, lots of people thought they were going to generate a lot of money for their utility because water use kept going up and up and up. Well, it didn't go up. And all that revenue um, is not accumulated to those utilities, so it has created challenges. Um, and those challenges are ones we're going to deal with um, in the future. So when you look at where we are today, we're in much better shape than we were yesterday. Uh, in the use of water, and to be honest, that continues today. Every year we're using less water than we have the year before. Um, about one to two percent reduction per year. That trend has not changed. It is continuing. It has slowed slightly, but not completely. Um, and so as we look to the future, we can hope that we continue to be wise in our use of water. I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about what the challenges are for tomorrow, however, um, because it's great that we're using less water, but there are many things that we're going to be faced with over the next decade, two decades, three decades, that are going to create challenges for all of us, and we're going to have to find solutions for problems. Uh, one is drought. Uh, you should have been able to experience that this year. Um, and uh, you know, when you think about drought this year, you know, and you think, well, what was the problem with that? How many think it was because of no snow? And how many think it was because of no rain? Most people think it was due to snow. Actually, it's probably neither one of those. It's the fact that this region has very little storage for water. Our rain, our precipitation this year is about normal for the year. Um, didn't get any snow, um, but we did get rain. We just haven't had any place to put it. So what happens in this region um, is you get precipitation. If you don't have a lot of storage, uh, you aren't able to supply water. If you lived in California, you got lots of storage and you got no water. Um, they have exactly the opposite problem. So for this region um, in the future, the drought conditions and drought issues are really going to be a little bit of a challenge about storage. And if you think about water supply and you think about snow and you think about rain, I think about my checking account. Uh, if I have uh, a lot of snow, it's like my savings account. I've got kind of savings uh, in the bank to be able to deal with shortfall. My rain is kind of like my checking account. Um, as long as I don't exceed uh, m money going out with money coming in, I'm in pretty good shape. If all of a sudden I don't have enough money coming in, rain coming in, then I go to my savings account. This year we didn't have anything in savings, so it created a problem um, in the region. Uh, this is a picture of Lake Taps. This year, we were doing a bunch of construction on Lake Taps. We drained Lake Taps. Oops. Um, not a good year to drain Lake Taps because it was a challenge filling it back up again. Uh, we eventually got it filled. But to fill Lake Taps, we had to put in 650 million gallons of water a day, three times as much as the whole Seattle water system was using in King County to try to fill it back up. But this is not atypical of what you'll see in reservoirs across the state this year, particularly in eastern Washington. As we look to the future, droughts are going to create more and more challenges uh, for the region 
uh, for, because of the uncertainty of future water supply. Climate change. Um, when people look at climate change, they think, oh, no water, um, no rain. Well, that can be a problem. This is what people typically think about uh, with climate change. Uh, they think about agriculture. They think about water availability. They think about uh, uh, empty reservoirs or bare ag land. Um, and that does happen. But look at the amount of rain change, uh, precipitation change in the country uh, over the last number of years. Radical changes and in increases in water, um, be, partly due to climate change and weather uncertainty, particularly in New England. Uh, radical changes, dealing with huge urban flooding issues because of that, New York City, for example. But you're also getting temperature changes. Um, in dealing with climate change. It's pretty easy to forecast temperature change during clim with climate change. It's much more difficult to figure out what's going to happen with precipitation. Uh, and precipitation, and lots of it, creates problems as do storm events. This is Sandy. Uh, my daughter actually lived about six blocks away from this picture, um, was out of her apartment for seven weeks in lower Manhattan um, because of the intensity change that's occurring due to climate change. Look at the intensity of rain events. Um, the rain intensity has increased radically in this region, high intensity, short duration rain events that create huge flooding. In this region, the whole wastewater and stormwater system was designed based on what I call the 24 hour drip. It slowly started raining here. Over time, it rained a little bit more. You accumulated water over a 24 hour period. The whole system was designed that way. When you drive home, look at the size of the stormwater drains on the street. And particularly in Seattle, they are very small, they are very old, and they don't take a large capacity of rain. Now what are we experiencing? High intensity, short duration, one, two, three hour storm events that are creating urban flooding issues. It's radically changing the way we're going to end up having to deal with the interface between water supply, wastewater, and stormwater in the future. Earthquakes. Um, you know, we all have watched what's happened across the world in Japan and in, in New Zealand. Um, and we think about the, the toll on individuals and houses, but you've got to understand the consequences on infrastructure, on water supply, on um, stormwater. Uh, here is the impact of Japan. Uh, the, on the left, you see a floating sewer um, post-earthquake. Uh, it just pushed the sewer system up out of the ground. Um, you also get subsidence, you see in the other picture. Uh, you look at uh, Christchurch, New Zealand in 2011. Again, floating sewer systems. The infrastructure is not designed to deal with significant earthquakes. Neither one of these earthquakes is the size that is predicted for the Northwest if we ever get a sub subduction earthquake. A subduction earthquake where the crust of the earth uh, uh, coincides right off in the ocean creates huge earthquakes, and they're significantly worse than that. Uh, you see the same thing in Japan with differential impacts on uh, infrastructure. So when we start dealing with earthquakes, it's not just the water you worry about, it's all your pipes in the ground. And in this region, you probably have $5 billion worth of pipes sitting throughout the region that are delivering water. Infrastructure. Um, here is an, uh, the impact of uh, long-term infrastructure. This, we bought uh, the lake taps from Puget Sound Energy. This is the drain holes for lake taps. Uh, that was the pipes that used to be in those drain holes. That's the rusted metal you see at the bottom. Wasn't maintained. A lot of the infrastructure in this region is on a 100 to 150 year renewal cycle. That may be enough. Um, infrastructure does have a longer life than we originally anticipated. But as you look to the future, all those investments, and a lot of them federally funded back in the 60s and 70s and 80s to put the infrastructure in, uh, led to uh, a situation now where we're going to have to figure out some way of paying for all this in the future. Rates and affordability. Um, people don't tend to think about the impacts of, of water rates on all the people in their jurisdictions. This graph is the one that is the most important to me. When you look at the percentage of income that low-income residents pay for water and wastewater versus residents that are making significant money, 
and it is only going to get worse. So what you see here is 6, 8, 10% of disposable income for low income is going to deal with basic services. This does not include electricity. This is dot, does not include stormwater. This is only wastewater and drinking water. Radical impact on low income. And how are you going to address that going forward? If you're going to have to make all these investments in infrastructure, then how are we going to deal with the fact that 25% uh, typically of the rate base can't afford to pay for it? I'm going to give you three questions I want you to take away um, and, and think a little bit bit about because they are going to drive the future. One is, uh, what are your desired service levels? What do you want your wastewater and water system to do? Um, you know, if you, if you think to the earthquake slide, uh, how long, how many people think we'd have water back in three days after significant earthquakes? How many think five days? How many think 10 days? It's interesting that what happens is there's an inverse relationship between people's uh, uh, thinking on when water is going to be returned. The younger people are, the faster they believe water is coming back and be served in the system. Uh, maybe it's the, the larger the trust is in government. I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, Seattle Public Utilities has done some intriguing polling, and it shows that people are not prepared individually to deal with uh, earthquakes or other kinds of emergencies because they, they think that the service levels provided by their utility are going to serve their needs, and they're not. Um, and so there are huge challenges ahead as we define those service levels. Two, if you look to the future, you gotta figure out how you're gonna break your systems before you can figure out how to fix your systems. We're working on a regional effort right now to take every one of the water systems in this region, in, in Pierce, Nohomish, and King County, and we're breaking them. We're figuring out with how to break them through earthquakes, how to break them with uh, droughts, how to break them with climate change, how to break them with water quality. And those scenarios are gonna allow us to develop mitigation processes to not necessarily solve them, but at least minimize slightly what the impacts uh, of breaking those systems are. That's critical to the long -term, uh, our long-term success. And then finally, once you've broken them and once you've got a strategy, then what investments do you, do you need to make? And at what level? Because it's a risk consequence discussion. You have to decide how much are you willing to invest to meet those service levels. Can you afford uh, in, to increase your rates $100 a year for all your customers? $1,000 a year for all your customers? $10,000 a year for all your customers? You have to choose how much you're gonna be willing to invest uh, to be able to mitigate some of the potential problems of providing water in the future. And I think that's the challenge you all are gonna be facing over the next decade, two decades, and three decades. Thank you.